Hello, it's Bob Baker here. Welcome to part 22 of 30 Ways to Become an Empowered Artist. In this one, I'm going to talk about a big picture view of online marketing. It's something I've actually been talking about the last few years or so. It's called the Octopus Marketing Formula. Perhaps you've heard me talk about it before, but if you haven't, I hope this will be very instructive because I'm going to give you a framework for how to look at how to promote your art and your creativity online. But first, I just want to remind you this series of free videos that I've been doing is all part of a 30-day fan funding campaign for a new book called The Empowered Artist that'll be out later this year, early next year. But it's much more than a book. It's a movement that I am on that I would like you to join me in. And the mission is to inspire and empower creative people just like you around the globe. Frankly, I'm tired of creative people being treated like second-class citizens, particularly treating themselves like second-class citizens. So click the link below the video or somewhere on this page to get more information about that project. I would love for you to support me in that effort. So let's talk about this octopus marketing formula thing. As I'm sure you are probably aware or have experienced, uh, online marketing in particular is very confusing. It's overwhelming. A lot of people feel frustrated that they can't wrap their brains around it. There's not enough hours in the day to devote to it. I know. I get it. So what I'm going to do here is just give you a basic framework, a big picture view of online marketing to help you focus your efforts and just understand what it is you're doing online. So I call this octopus marketing for a reason. Uh, just imagine the shape of an octopus. You basically, you have the head, the main mass of the body in the middle, and then extending out from that body are several tentacles. And to me, this is a great analogy about a way to look at online marketing. The head in the middle or the center of all your activities online should be your own personal artist website or your company website, something you own and that you control. What you want to avoid is using one of the free social media or online platforms as your main real estate online, like pointing everyone to your Facebook page or your YouTube channel. And promoting your address there instead of your own .com and your own website that you host and control. Because these sites like Facebook and YouTube and others, while they're great, they don't owe you anything. Especially if they're free, you will have little to no recourse if suddenly something goes wrong. Maybe someone accidentally reports you for something that you didn't even do and they cancel your profile. You can't get anybody to respond to your emails or your request that, hey, I didn't do that. I mean, I've heard people that this has happened to. So it's so vital you really need to own and control your domain, your primary domain online. And that should be your own website, a .com, where you pay for hosting, you control the mailing list, and all that good stuff. And that sits at the center of all your activities online. If you don't like the octopus reference with the tentacles, think of it as a bicycle tire, where your website is the axle in the middle. You've got spokes reaching out to the uh, tire rim. And all around that tire rim sit all the places where you have a presence online. This would be Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn and Google Plus and YouTube. If you're an author or a musician, Amazon would be part of that. Maybe it's iTunes or iBooks. If you're a visual artist, there are a number of art sites where you should have a presence. And all these things are interconnected. In fact, the spokes that reach out from your website to your places where you have a social media presence, they are actually two-way streets. You're reaching out to post things on these various sites. Like, for instance, you go out and you'll post something on Facebook. Well, instead of just having people interact there on Facebook, which is fine, you might provide a link back to your site where they could see some of your latest offerings, whether it's a photo of your artwork or an audio of one of your new songs. And you draw people from the social media platform to your site where you control the environment. There are as many distractions about all the other people doing stuff there. It's where you create a relationship with them. You also make them aware of how they can get on your email list so you can even more directly communicate with them. So this is a series of reaching out, posting relevant, valuable content or links to content, whether you created it or somebody else created it, that will be of interest to your audience. Interacting with people in the places where they hang out. Some people love Twitter, so you want to hang out there and communicate with them on Twitter. Some people are in the Google+, Plus, you want to do that with them there. But at the same time, on a regular basis, you want to be giving them reasons to come to your website to check out some of your newest offerings. So again, it's all an interconnected web, hence I guess why they call it the World Wide Web. 
So that's the basic framework there that I think is really helpful to wrap your brain around. One more quick thing on this, and I've done entire one or two hour workshops on this, so I'm only scratching the surface here. But one of the big questions I hear is, what site should I be using? What's the main thing I should be doing with my time online? I'm sorry, there's no one size fits all easy button answer. Hate to break the news to you. But the thing is, you don't have to be on all of these sites. You don't have to spend equal time on all of them. It's far better to determine which of the ones you're drawn to more, what communication mode you're strongest at, and pick one or two of these platforms where you're going to pour most of your energy into and have most of your content sifted through. And then maybe use the other sites to direct people to that primary platform or mode of communication. But regardless of what site or sites you choose to focus on, the ones that you resonate with, you have to regularly point people back to your website. Don't only post them on those particular sites. Always be luring people back to your home on the web. So again, I can only scratch the surface in this short video, but I hope this octopus marketing formula or bicycle tire analogy helps you uh, look at it in a different way. That makes it a little bit more easy to comprehend. So if you like this video, please share it with some of your creative friends who could really use the information. And as I post this, there's only like several days or less than a week left in my fan funding campaign for a new book I'm working on called The Empowered Artist. It's a call to action to musicians, to writers, to visual artists, to creative people of all kinds around the world. It's really a mission that I'm on, and I would love for you to join me in this movement. So click the link somewhere on the page here to find out more about that. I would love your support. That's it for now. I'll be back tomorrow with another video. So this is Bob Baker saying so long for now.